Canon just provided firmware 1.5.1 for the Canon EOS R5. This is shortly after we got the firmware update for the Canon EOS R3. And if you own the Canon R6, you also got a firmware update 1.5.1, and this one doesn't brick your camera. However, before I get into the details of what this fixes and what enhancements it provides, please do read the release notes. This is a cumulative update, so if you haven't installed previous updates and you install this, it's going to install all the fixes and enhancements from previous updates. One other thing too, if you don't need the fixes and enhancements from this firmware update, I highly recommend just waiting to see if, and you know our six owners, you had this with 1.4, or was it 1.3? I can't remember, but it basically bricked the R6. So just wait a week or two, see if there's any noise, and then go ahead and apply the firmware update. Unless, of course, this fix really does improve your workflow. All right, so let's get to find out what fixes and enhancements firmware 1.5.1 provides. Firmware version 1.5.1 incorporates this fix and this fix only. It fixes an issue in rare instances where the camera may become inoperable when shooting in servo AF setting, while operating the AF on button. So if you don't have any issues with your R5 basically freezing or powering off, you might want to just wait and see that it goes well with everybody else. Uh, I personally haven't updated the firmware update yet. I'm probably going to wait a while myself because I really don't suffer from any, well, the camera freezing. I think maybe I've had it a few times where storage has become a little bit unreliable, but other than that, I haven't had any issues. I might even skip this and wait for 1.6. So I was really surprised we didn't get that 30 minute record limit lifted, Barry. I know that's one thing we've all been looking forward to because it's just silly. I mean, who provides a 30 minute record limit on video these days? And why would you do it? Arbitrarily just say, hey, you know, after 30 minutes, we're gonna ruin your customer experience. Yep, that's canon where we don't have to do it legally. There's no tax, there's no reason to do this, but just because we love you, we're gonna, just shut down the camera from recording at 30 minutes. It's really annoying, unless of course you get a Ninja 5 or some other external recorder, and then you can record indefinitely. Kind of silly, isn't it? I mean, you can get around it quite easily. Why not just remove it? Come on, Canon, the time is over. Just get rid of it. And Jay, the uh, Magenta color cast, that hasn't been fixed either. There's no other enhancements related to that. I know you'd like to see that gone, but it's not. And uh, Jeff, there's no minor AF improvements or enhancements. Basically what we got with 1.5 is still there. There's been no changes there as well. And Fenton, you're most happy, of course, because it fixed your the freezing up of your camera. And Fenton, I'd like to find out if, if you do go ahead and apply this right away, uh, do you notice any differences? A, a lot of times when you're doing troubleshooting with hardware and software, companies will release firmware updates or software updates and a lot of times they'll fix things, but sometimes, sometimes they actually make things a little bit worse. So Fenton, let me know um, how this works. And also if you could provide me a bit of feedback, letting me know how often your camera would freeze and if and how this helps. So yeah, um, I know I got up early this morning to um, shoot this video for you guys for a firmware update, thinking there might be something really juicy inside. And I get it, if your R5 is freezing a lot, great. But for, the, for most of us, it's a pretty rare occurrence. So yeah, a bit of a sleeper one there, but um, yeah. Okay, so let I wanna tell you one more thing today. I have a live stream later today at 1800 hours Eastern time, that's 6 p.m. New York time. I'm really excited by this uh, live stream. I've got four guests with me this time, and there's been so much to talk about in the last couple of weeks to cover here. Well, really the last week. We're gonna go back for the last week, and we're gonna cover off the major camera news, but one thing I'm gonna encourage with my interviewers is we're going to have a debate between the OM1 and the Panasonic GH6, which is the best camera. And this is going to be done in sort of a PBS style. It's not going to be done in a barroom brawl kind of style where we're not going to be throwing insults. We're not going to be being harsh on cameras, but we're going to take a look from different viewpoints and argue which is the best camera. And that should be very, very interesting. I've been very excited by both cameras. I personally think that the OM1 uh, when it comes to stills, is is a terrific camera, and it does well in that regard. But when it comes to video, from everything that has been leaked on the GH6, it's, it's a wow camera from video. And we pretty well have everything at this point. We have all the detailed specs that have been released. Uh, yesterday, one of the ambassadors, one of the people reviewing the camera, actually posted their video online unlisted, and it leaked all over the place. I put out a video last night covering off some of the things, and it showed the autofocus. And while it showed the autofocus hunting a little bit, 
it looked a lot better than previous. But again, this is just, we, we don't have an awful lot. We don't have an awful lot on the autofocus. We need to see more reviews, not just a person walking back and forth in and out of frame. We need to see it with some run and gun stuff. Uh, we need to see it with people truly understanding the autofocus settings and tweaking it because this might be considerably better. We'll just have to wait and see. So really excited by that. Um, that's what we're going to do at 6 o'clock tonight or 1800 hours. Again, that's New York time, Toronto time, Montreal time. I've got some wonderful guests. If you want to know which guests I have, we'll take a look at the thumbnail. It's already scheduled so you can set a reminder. And uh, this should be quite interesting. We've got experts in photography. We've got retail experts here in Canada. We've got video experts uh, and we've got sound experts. So it's a little bit of everything. And in a way, these two cameras represent a little bit of everything as well. And one last thing before I let you go, don't forget, I'm giving away an Angelbird 512 gigabyte CF Express card and a 160 gig Express card, CF Express card. Sorry, my eyes aren't the best, so I always have to take a second look. But these are Angelbird's AV Pro. Uh, this one here is the AV Pro SE, the 512 gig, and this is the AV Pro SX. Yesterday, some people had trouble finding these online, say, no, Simon, they're 400 odd dollars. You want to make sure you look for the AV Pro SX and the SE. They're both $179.99, but I'm giving one away at the end of the month. And all you have to do for your chance to win is subscribe. That's it. You do have to be at least 18 years of age or older. And if you're less than 18 years of age, get an adult to subscribe for you. And that's really all you have to do. You do have to have a postal res residence here on the planet. If you're living off world, watching this on Alpha Centauri or some other planet or system, the universe, I'm sorry, it only applies to Terrans because, well, simply put, UPS, Canada Post, FedEx, they only deliver on the planet. And if you live in Antarctica, you're covered as well. So really, really exciting. Both of these cards are terrific. I love the 512 gigabyte. It has a minimum sustained write speed of 800 megabytes per second. Perfect for the Panasonic GH6. With Apple ProRes, you have a minimum, minimum sustained bit rate of 1.9 gigabits, not bytes per second. And with this card doing 800 megabytes per second sustained from beginning to end a card, so it doesn't matter how much information is on the card, that works out to be, so 800 times 8, that's 6,400 megabits per second. So the Apple ProRes would only take, what, like 200 megabits per second or something like that. So really, really good. And of course, the 160 gigabyte card, it's really designed for photographers who are really interested in continuous high-speed shooting or, or people who want the maximum endurance and performance. Uh, they're truly incredible cards. So again, subscribe uh, for your chance to win. And I'll be announcing the winner around March the 1st once I've been able to take a look at all the subscribers because it does take a while to go through. YouTube doesn't make it easy to find all the subscribers and then randomly pick a winner. But thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for watching The Ordinary Filmmaker. I really do appreciate your patronage. We'll see you again soon.